Hey guys, I'm Greg. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. We're in Afton, Virginia, on Afton's Mountain. Let's see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody. Thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. This should be a treat. This is Dogfish Head. This is the Miles Davis Bitches Brew. Ale brewed with honey and gesho. I don't know what gesho. I don't know what honey is, but gesho, G-E-S-H-O. Gesho, gesho. Mario's on the label. This is a big bottle. This is a 750 milliliter, just like a wine bottle. Uh, Miles Davis, Seminole Bitches Brew album was a game changer. A bold fusion of rock, punk, and jazz. To honor the 40th anniversary release, Doc Pichette has created a bold, dark beer that is a fusion of three threads Imperial Stout, one thread honey beer with gesho root. Like the album, this beer will age with the best of them. To hear the music and the story that's inspired very good, go to milesdavis.com slash brew. So, uh, it comes highly touted and recommended. Uh, so we'll see what this brings. Uh, Dogfish Head, guys, those, they're out of Milton, Delaware. Uh, this is a 9% ABV beer. Uh, I don't think they it says rotating schedule here, but I'm not familiar enough to know. Uh, I don't know if they do this uh, once a year or how exactly often. If it's done once and, and, and whatever. Uh, the food pairings of this, uh, it says general, of course it's a, it's a uh, Russian Imperial Stout, so they're going to say general and chocolate. So it's a very roasty chocolate coffee type beer, more than likely. I've never had this beer before. This will be the first time for me. Glassware, pint, the uh, Becker, uh, Tumbler, uh, they say Nonic, or the Snifter. And I've got the Dubell glass guys, you know, I use that for the bigger beers, especially the Russian Imperials at 9%. Well, they should have a big aroma. Uh, the beer, of course, can be cellared for extended periods. It probably, it doesn't say, but I'm, you know, doing what I've been doing for the last couple of years, a 9% beer, this is beer is going to keep for anywhere between, I'd say, 5 to 10 years, maybe even just a little longer. Uh, it may even keep 20 years, I'm not sure. I haven't been doing it long enough to know, but with that much alcohol, it's going to keep for quite a while. Uh, I don't know what flavors are going to be muted. The stronger the beer is, uh, time will ease that usually. So if it's, it's too sweet or too bitter or something, those 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 flavors and aromas so will uh, will mute over time and blend. And uh, hopefully, it's what you're it's what we're trying to uh, get when we have those kind of beers are just a little too strong one way or the other. So without further ado, I, don't, I said that I don't think we need to get any more information off of this page that I've been giving you already. No, so let's get it open here, guys. Look at that. Now, I've just barely got it in there, and that's a 9% beer, and look what the head has generated already, so. Very nice. Look at the chocolatey head. Very, very nice. Well, I can smell it already from there. Well, wow. it is pitch black. It is midnight black. It is 68 dirty motor oil black. It is. Pitch black. No light whatsoever coming through on this one. Gorgeous head on that beer. It is a very, very tan and chocolatey looking head right on top of that beer. Let's get a nose on this one. Wow. I mean, as I get closer, I can smell it. Wow. That has a chocolatey, roasty malt. Coffee. Wow, that smells awesome. A lot of times the uh, the dogfish head beers, uh, Sam goes off to one way, that, and they, they brew so much different stuff. I mean, he's not limited by anything. If he thinks it'll taste good in a beer, he'll put it in there. He'll try it. He'll make something. 
It's hard to tell how many different variations of beers this guy's done since he's been in business, but he's not scared to try anything, no doubt about that. I'll have to give Dr. Shea that. They don't, I mean, if, it, if somebody told them the gravels would make it taste different, I believe he'd put gravels in it, so uh, I, uh, hats off for them for doing that. So, you know, he's not scared to try something different, you know, and it's not always the winter, not to me anyway, but sometimes they are, so this just smells wonderful. Some dark fruit. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of chocolate on it, though. A whole lot of chocolate. Usually, you know, I don't get that much chocolate unless they've added either cocoa nibs or, or added chocolate to the, to the brew or, or whatever. Well, it smells wonderful. Some, some licorice in there. Well, I also get a little bit of the alcohol. Not a lot, but just a little bit of it. it smells wonderful, guys. Cheers. I'm flapping my gums. The nose is just a little better than the, it's a little thin on the mouth. Now, it needs a little more body to it. It's, it's not got that creamy mouth feel quite to me. It's, it's, too, it's a little too thin. But it is tasty. Very easy drinking. Very sessionable, as a matter of fact, for a 9% beer and being a pricey beer. And a rare beer, hard to get. Got a pleasant aftertaste, though. Just a little on the thin side. Other than that, it tastes wonderful. A lot of, a lot of roasty malt. I get more chocolate on the nose than I actually do on the taste. Roasty malt. Maybe a little licorice in there. Not, not a lot of dark fruit, but maybe just a little bit. Maybe a, some prunes or something in there. Nice lacing on the glass. Look at that. That's gorgeous. I'm probably being a little too critical on the beer. It's pretty good, but it, it does have a thin mouthfeel to me. Would like a little more creaminess to the beer. So, guys, let's ride the fridge. Maybe it'll, it'll get a little creamier as it warms up, guys. So let's see what this one does. And this is a big bottle. I'm definitely going to share another half of this, at least with the uh, with the wife here, and see what she thinks of it. And stick around. I'll be right back. Let's see what this one gets. I've had some of my subs say they wanted, wanted me to do this one. I was going to sell her for a while, so I decided to go ahead and get it out and do it and, and see what it brings. So, uh, stick around. Let's see what this one brings. It looks pretty impressive so far. I right, guess thanks for sticking around. Got just a little left in the glass here. This is a very, very nice beer. Pleasantly surprised. The uh, the beer goes with the hype. Uh, pretty tasty beer. Glad I picked this one up. It's got a wonderful smell to it to me. It is a very pleasant beer as far as aromas and tasting. Wow. What kind of wish I got two of them now? But it's kind of on the pricey side too. It's a little on the expensive side. I doubt there's any of them are, are left uh, available. So I'll check when I go back to Ben and Cellar and see if there's any more of this, guys. But this is this is worth picking one up and putting it away. It definitely is. That is wonderful. I'm leaving it. Whoa, look at the lacing on the glass there. I mean, it's leaving the, the alcohol legs running down the side of the glass. Excellent. This is well done, Sam. Cheers to you, Sam. Final chug, guys. The mouthfeel is just a little thin. That's just my opinion. Everything else is wonderful. Very nice beer. The price is it's a little pricey beer, but... I'll tell you what the deal is on this. First of all, they got it in the great big wine bottle, so that's more expensive to do. Plus, it's got Miles Davis's name and the likeness of the album on here. So they're paying royalties to Sony Music for that. And it's got a legacy label here on the side. So they're playing, they're playing a lot of people just to have this picture on there and then to have it in this bottle and all the hype to go with it. So there's a whole lot of things that contribute to making this beer an expensive beer. 
and with all the hype going around it, they uh, they do a limited release on it and don't do a very big uh, batch of this, and it just it creates the want for this beer and and people see it and hear and reviews like I do and and everybody else that does reviews and it's a very tasty beer and it's it's very similar to what Founders does with a lot of their real good beers the KBS and the CBS and and even the Founders of Breakfast Step. They, they don't do a whole lot of it and it has limited releases and they, there's a lot of hype that goes with it and it, it becomes such a demand for it it drives the price up and that's why you see uh, the CBS that, that's a prime example of that that's like the ultimate hype and even Hop Slam, Bell's Hop Slam and Russian River Pliny the Elder there, there, is such, there is so much hype that goes with these beers that drives the price up and, it, and, they, and they do them as, and, and even Foothills, Sexual Chocolate and it drives the price up on this and, and these people will stand in line for hours the day these beers are released and they release them very limited and it's a uh, some of the beers live up to the hype and some of them do not. This one actually does. So without rambling on and on and on, guys, this is a 9 out of 10 as far as I'm concerned. It is very, very nice. It, it could be even a 10 beer, but I'm not going to give it the 10. It is a 9. I don't quite like the mouthfeel on this one. It's just a little bit thin. And I don't like all the hype going around this. Uh, it, the beer don't have to be this expensive. I know uh, I've read a little background in, in him and Kyle, Sam when he went to college and this album and all that. So uh, they don't need to be paying Sony uh, to use the likeness and, and put it on their label to drive the cost of the beer up. I'm just not a big fan of that. Beer is beer and you don't need all the advertising costs to make to drive the price up or, or something like this. So that's just my two cents, guys. The beer would probably be five dollars cheaper if it didn't have Miles Davis's picture and likeness on it. So that's just the way I feel about it. Great beer has this 99 overall and a 91 in the style. Excellent marks from them. And Beer Advocate actually has a 92, which I think that's the biggest, that's the highest marks that I've seen from them since they started their new rating system. So I was concerned that they were all going to be in the 80s or lower from here on out on them, but this one gets pretty mark, pretty good marks from those guys. So. Guys, if you've had this, or you've seen it, or, or you've tasted it, give me some comments back on this, and I thought it was a damn excellent beer, 9 out of 10 scale, it'd probably be a 10 if it had just a little bit better, creamier mouthfeel, so, that's my two cents worth, guys, and as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and come on back tomorrow, we're going to look in the fridge, see you then.